One of the hardest parts about starting out as a freelance designer is finding new clients. So in this video, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite ways for beginners to get your name out there and get yourself in front of good quality clients. And that is to send Loom Critique videos. In my video about how to find clients remotely, many of you asked in the comments to see a step-by-step -step run through of how I do it in real time. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. What I'm gonna do is share my screen and show you my step-by-step -step process of how I do this. And really it's just three steps. The first step, I'm gonna show you a simple way to actually find websites. The second step, I'll show you how to prepare for the Loom video. For the third step, I'll do a Loom video live so you can see how it's done. For this video, I'm gonna show how this can be done for two different types of industries. The first one is going to be a productivity app. And the second one will be a dentistry. So let's get into this. All right, so for the first step, we're going to find a few websites to critique. And for me, the best way to find one is through Google Maps. So uh, currently you can see that I'm here in Da Nang in Vietnam, but I think let's just say for today, we're gonna to look for clients in London. So first of all, type in London and that will take us to there. And now we can say, okay, let's start to look for, um, first of all, the productivity app uh, client that we would like to work with. So simply type in productivity app. I can see I've already, already typed it in there. So we can just click for that. And then we can see a bunch of these have come up. So what I would do here is simply hold down command. You can actually see that all the website links are already here ready and displayed. So all you need to do is just go hold down command, click, 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 and just go through. Just go through the whole list, right? And then what you basically have are a bunch of websites that we can start to review. Okay, we can go through each of these and start to see, okay, is there a website here that we think looks like it could do with our help? Does it need a loom critique? And probably once I get into the real flow of this, I would probably do every single one of them. I'll probably just go through, even if it's looking quite good, you never really know. And there's usually something you can critique. So let's just go through all these ones we've just randomly selected. So we've got, we've got this one, we've got uh, this one. This is looking, you know, quite good. Uh, we've got this one, could do some work. This one, this one doesn't even have a uh, website anymore, so we can get rid of that. We have this one, I think it could do with a fair bit of work. This one, we can do a lot of work. So we've already got a range of, of options here, and that's just from the first few selections. So we're already doing quite well with finding a opportunity. Um, now, I'm gonna just have a quick look through. Now, I think that probably uh, for this, the, the sake of this video, let's just do one of these. So this one's looking fine, that one's looking fine. Uh, this one could definitely do with some work, um, yeah. This one I think is, is looking like it could do a, quite a fair bit of work. So just from the just from the homepage, just from what I first see. And then we have this one that could do with a lot of work. I feel like this is just too easy uh, for me to critique. So not to be cr too critical, but um, I think for the sake of this video, I think this will be interesting for us to break down. So that is how I found the first uh, website. But once again, I'd say, you know, go through as many of these as you can, get into the flow and just do as many critiques as possible. So let's get into how I would then start to prepare for the Loom video. The next step is basically just to scroll through and start to to make some notes about, okay, what would I improve about this website? So, you know, I'm already seeing things like the, the, the heading here is quite confusing. Um, yeah, you know, we build deal app technology, or is it meant to be ideal app technology? Yeah, that's not ideal. And um, it's kind of like the name of the business. Um, so I, I feel like it could be much, much clearer. So there's, you know, a bunch of things we can pull out here. The overall design looks like it could do it with some work, right? Um, there's a lot of kind of moving shapes on top of you know this is the legibility could be better so there's, there's a whole host of things that we can start to point out what i just basically do is go through all of this and begin to make some notes and say okay there's maybe like five or six things i would just point out uh, to to this client in a loom video and what i'll make sure i do is on the loom critique video i will just basically make sure i've mentioned these things so great and um, we found ourselves a potential new client so once i've done that i think it's time to fire up loom and give this a go. So let's jump into it. Hi there, my name's Charlie Osborne. I am a designer and web developer, and I just came across your website and I thought I'd quickly drop you a loom just to give you a few thoughts because um, what I specialize in is helping businesses build and design uh, websites that convert um, and really achieve business goals. And so I, th I think I can see a few opportunities here for you to actually make some improvements to your design and just a kind of overall general approach. Um, I really love this kind of concept around your business, and I, I've just kind of been reading through your about section, and can see that you, you know, you're all about kind of helping efficiency uh, in businesses, and you use software to do that. Um, and yeah, I just have a few thoughts about how perhaps we could uh, convey that message a bit more clearly, perhaps, and and help some more of the user experience. So, uh, if you'll humour me for a few minutes, I'd love to get through just a few tips and ideas uh, for you to potentially use. So, let's just quickly start at the top, and uh, I'll work through. So. 
The first thing I'd draw potentially your attention to here is the way that you've treated the, the this heading section, the title. Um, I personally found this a little bit confusing because I didn't understand whether it was meant to be ideal app technology or deal app technology, or we build deal tech. Uh, yeah, there's a few different ways to read that. So a suggestion here I would have is just to basically move, change the uh, title here to be a little bit more benefit uh, driven, perhaps even just kind of identify the fact that you guys do, uh, you, you're focused on efficiency and you're focused on businesses. So I would actually bring that into the title and communicate how you can help businesses be more efficient using interesting uh, technology and different software solutions. Um, to me, that would be a very compelling first impression for the website. So just a quick thought on that. Um, wonder, wonder what you think about that. I was also just uh, assessing your logo as well. And I think there's potentially an opportunity here to kind of simplify. You've got a few different details happening here. And really, you know, when you think about logos, one of the key things is just simplicity and how memorable it is. And at the moment, the, the issue that I'm seeing there is there's a lot of detail. So I wonder if there's a way that we could take this logo and actually simplify it down uh, into a mark that is recognizable, distinct, um, and, and still quite simple. Um, so a few opportunities there. Let's have a quick look at some of the uh, details. So I also noticed with the contact us button here. So my expectation with this was that it would either take me down to the bottom of the page or just simply take me through to a contact page. Um, but actually, it just kind of opened up this window, and that felt felt quite kind of jarring to me, asking me if I wanted to open Skype. Um, that user experience kind of felt a little bit unexpected, and so my recommendation there would be to either, yeah, as I say, open up a different form or take it down to the, uh, the end of the page to just fill in the form. Uh, moving down the page, I think that um, there's an opportunity here to really uh, use an image that would be perhaps a little bit more descriptive, uh, showcasing perhaps some more of your technology, some more of the software, some more of the products that you've made in the past. Sometimes having that transparency is a really uh, powerful thing to have. And a final suggestion I'd have with these sections is just really to do with legibility. Um, I'm finding it quite hard with all the imagery to kind of read each of these. So there may be an opportunity here just to kind of improve legibility and maybe split things out a bit. But otherwise, I love what you guys are doing and um, hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Um, I'm more than happy to have a quick call with you if it's just a quick 30 minutes to discuss how I could help you in the future. So if that's of interest, I'll leave my email in the description. Thanks for your time and I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Cheers. All right, so that was good fun. Hope you found that helpful. Uh, there's a few points to note with that. I think it's really important to begin with to first of all, start by introducing yourself and telling them what you do, and then to move into not just straight away into the critique, but always mention something positive, something that you liked about their business, and then move into the critique. And at the end, say something positive again and tell them how they can reach out to you. And so really, you're already always thinking about this as a kind of a three-step process. Start by introducing yourself, move into the critique, and then end with a call to action. If you do that, um, you're basically covering all the different things you need to be able to make sure you're saying in each of these Loom Critique videos. All right, so for this one, we're gonna do dentists. So once again, we can just jump into Google Maps, type in something like London Dental, something along those lines, click on that, and then see what we come up with. And then once again, we're just gonna go through and open up all of the different websites that come up. Uh, do a quick recce, have a little scan through and see if we can find any websites that look like they could do with our help. So we have this one, we have this one. Okay, yeah, this one could definitely do with some help as well. Yeah, so I mean, all of them, you, know, you could probably critique all of these quite happily once again. So, so many opportunities out there for people to just, you know, get your name out there and uh, and reach out and do and provide some value. So I think um, this one's looking quite nice in some ways, but I think there's also a, a big opportunity. And what I quite like, is when uh, it's uh, it's a little bit more challenging. So I think let's jump into this one once again, do a Loom Critique video for these guys, and uh, same same kind of process. First of all, have a look through, scan through the site, see what kind of uh, uh, things you can pick out, maybe just five or six different things to say, yeah, those are things we can improve. Make a list of those, make a note, and then fire up Loom and send it away. It doesn't need to be something you spend too much time doing. It can just be very quick, and that way you can get into the kind of routine and rhythm of sending quite a few of these and get you know a bunch of them out every day. So let's jump into it. 
Hi, I hope you're having a good one. My name's Charlie Osborne. I'm a website designer and developer, and I actually just came across your website and wanted to get in touch with you because I can see some opportunities potentially for you to improve your site. One of the things that I specialize in is helping dentists uh, improve their website so that they can convey trustworthiness and to uh, actually increase sales through online bookings. So um, I wanted to just quickly touch upon your website, give you a few ideas, and um, see if you wanted to have a conversation. So uh, the first thing I'll say is I actually really liked the way that you put together your brand. I think the, this color of pink and white is really fresh, it's very modern, and it kind of conveys as something that feels really quite fun, and I like that a lot. Um, but I do think that there's certain ways that we can improve this to uh, make the website a little bit more workable, uh, improve perhaps uh, some legibility, um, and just generally kind of improve some of the hierarchy of messaging. So let's go through some of the thoughts that I've uh, I've discovered here. So the first thing I would say is that having pink as your as your brand color, I think is really cool and unique, but um, using it for the text here and the call to action buttons, I'm thinking is not that great in terms of legibility. Um, so they're kind of a bit faded on the, on the background. And for some people um, with impaired eyesight, this could actually be quite difficult for them to read. Um, it also, I, I think potentially, I'm gonna guess that one of the key things you want people to do on this site is click on one of these big buttons here, um, but they're kind of being faded away, and some of the um, some of the interest is being drawn to something below. So, um, if you want to, this to be changed a bit, I would suggest potentially actually having these as a slightly different color, or just keeping them like this, the inverted version. It makes it a lot more clear to see. So that's uh, that's my first my first point. Um, I'd also uh, suggest that with the way that you've um, utilized some of the spacing on the page could be slightly altered. So we have quite a lot of um, empty space at the top. And as a designer, I think blank space and white space is a very good thing. But I think potentially we could actually rework this a little bit um, to emphasize certain other points. So what I would probably do with the site is I'd bring the menu up to the top. I'd align it with the logo and with these call to actions. And then I could use some of the more of the white space in the middle to have a message. And at the moment, your message, your main you know, message is your is the actual business name. And I'd say that this is actually potentially a missed opportunity because, you know, we have the business name here in the logo. So actually what we could put here is something slightly different, something that would perhaps talk about one of the big benefits for the customer for, uh, you know, using your service. Um, so uh, this could be actually a great opportunity to make a compelling case for someone to land on the website to go with you. Perhaps it will be some sort of proof of credibility. Um, perhaps you've you know, been uh, given some sort of award before or um, have some sort of statistic that tells the, the, the user you know, something great about your business. This would be a really great opportunity to bring that in. So that's something I would also suggest. Uh, and the other thing is, is that there's a little bit of competition happening here in terms of all the hierarchy, in terms of what's the most important thing I should be looking at here? because. We have you know, the buttons at the top, which I'm assuming are important. We also have lots of information down below as well. So uh, what I would probably want to do is separate this out a little bit, space it out, and uh, give emphasis to the things that are really, truly important. Um, and so scrolling down, um, another little point I'd make is, again, legibility. So we have this kind of white button on a white background. So it's kind of hard to read. Uh, we have the same case here. Um, and yeah, I think there's a little bit of a shift that can be happening to design just to kind of bring these out if they are important. Uh, we've got this carousel here, again, kind of competing with everything. So we could probably make a decision here. Okay, what is the most important thing? What do we want users to do? And then what can we um, put as a priority? So if the priority were these buttons, I would suggest that we actually make this a dedicated space to them uh, rather than having them compete with this moving, changing image on the left. Let's scroll down. And the final piece of advice I'd say is just in terms of readability. So people uh, tend to find any sentences that are longer than, you know, 10 words max, quite overwhelming. And at this one, I mean, there must be about you know, 15, 16, 17 words, maybe more, 20. Uh, so that's going to be very hard for people to read and it will actually dissuade and discourage people to read it. So what I would suggest here is that we kind of close this in and bring it in to make it a lot more readable. Let's have a little scroll through and see if there's anything else. I love the imagery, imagery you're using. It's very, very modern. So great. And you're giving all the information you need with the location. So all of that's fantastic. So yeah, just a few points there on the design. Anyway, as I mentioned at the start, I am a web designer and developer. 
And I would love to help you make some improvements to this, this website so you can, first of all, you know, convey some more trustworthiness and credibility, uh, but also actually close more sales. So if that's a conversation you'd like to have, just let me know. We can get that arranged. I'll leave my email in the description of this video. Anyway, hope you're having a good one and thanks for your time. Cheers. That was a lot of fun. Hopefully that was helpful for you to watch. And what I would say is that it's really important for you to understand that there's a few different things and a few specifics that you can make sure you're identifying when you're looking at the website. And what I like to do is almost have a checklist of things that you can say, okay, have I checked the messaging? Have I looked at the imagery quality? You know, is the logo good? Is the branding good? Uh, is the user experience well put together and driving people towards the desired outcome? There's a lot of things that you can critique on each of these websites. And so what I've put together for you to make your life easier is just a checklist that you can have in front of you so that every time you do one of these critiques, you can just take a look at the checklist, make sure you're looking at all the right things to identify when you're doing one of these critique videos. If you'd like to download that checklist so you have it for yourself next time, there's a link in the description for that. So what I'll do is I'll leave that checklist in the comments below, so make sure you go and grab that. If you found this video helpful, make sure you leave a like and let me know in the comments, what did you learn from this video and are you going to try doing some of these Loom Critique videos? I hope you do because they're a lot of fun and they are so effective at getting yourself in front of great clients. Best of luck and I'll see you in the next one.